day to you learners hope you are doing great in today's lesson we are going to talk about the introduction to integrated science we'll be looking at the concept of integrated science branches of science the safety precautions in the laboratory and then how to use scientific methods to solve problems okay so let's begin before we proceed we need to explain science let's have a fair knowledge of science so what is science science is the investigation and interpretation of events which occur in our natural and physical environment science also has another definition which is very common to all of us is defined as the knowledge acquired through observation experimentation and evaluation of information gained in relation with other established bodies of knowledge so with science it involves a gathering and recording of knowledge to find answers to the questions and challenges that life pose, poses every day so what are the branches of science science can be grouped into two the first one is the pure science and the second applied science let's start with the first group pure science pure science is simply obtaining knowledge from research and they are biology chemistry and physics biology chemistry and physics they make the pure science biology is the study of living things physics is is concerned with forces that exist between objects and their interrelation between matter and energy then we have chemistry that's a study of composition of matter and its existence with biology is subdivided into three main branches we have the botany the zoology and the microbiology botany is the study of plants zoology is the study of animals and microbiology is the study of microorganisms and their effect on the environment since we've seen pure science let's look at applied science applied science is the use of knowledge from pure science to solve problems in our daily lives what are some of the examples of applied science one agriculture that's a study of cultivation of crops and rent of animals for man's use we have geology the word geo g-e-o literally means f so Geology, the study of the origin, structure, and composition of the Earth. Another example of applied science is astronomy. This deals with the study of the stars. We have engineering, this is the study of me mechanisms. We have biotechnology, the development and application of techniques involving biological process to improve the production of materials useful to man so these are examples of applied science now the brother of science is what technology so we say science and technology they move hand in hand so let's look at technology technology like science has many definitions but i'm going to give you only one for today's lesson so what is technology technology is a process by which scientific knowledge and discoveries are applied and used to satisfy human needs it's a process by which scientific knowledge and discoveries are applied and used to satisfy human needs so examples of technology we have the information technology it we have the biotechnology which deals with the use of biological principle particularly the use of microorganisms and zoology and genetic engineering to produce materials for human consumption then the last one we have food technology 
This deals with the use of scientific ideas and methods for processing and preserving food. So, what are the importance of science and technology? Through science and technology, there has been an improvement in health. And as a result of production of new vaccines and drugs to fight against deadly diseases, such as the HIV, AIDS, poliomyelitis, measles, smallpox, chickenpox, etc. So there have been improvements in health. We have machines like the x-ray machines and the rest to help diagnose a patient. There has been an improvement in communication such as the transmission of information by the use of telephones, mobiles, electronic mails, email, fax machine, and the internet as well. We, we do even search for information on the internet. There has been an improvement through science and technology. There has been an improvement in transportation. Today we have cars, we have airplanes, we have ships, we have trains to facilitate the movement of people, goods, and services from one place to another. There has also been an improvement in education. There has been an improvement in sanitation. We have machines that recycles our waste to something useful to man. Good. So as you embark on a journey of studying science, we have careers in science and technology. I'll mention a few to you later on you can decide on what to choose so after studying science you can be a medical laboratory technician um, doctor optician ecologist botanist a nurse a radiographer a pilot a caterer nutritionist mechanical engineer, chemical engineer, pharmacist, geologist, science teacher, etc. There are more. In the science field, there are, there are more careers in the science field. So these are just a few. Now, since we've looked at the introduction of science, let's look at how the scientist operates and what are the methods they use in solving a problem and this is what we term as a scientific method scientific method is a method used to find a solution to a problem okay so to summarize the scientific method refers to the systematic steps a scientist follows in order to solve a problem the systematic steps a scientist follows in order to solve a problem what are the steps one identification of problem two hypothesis formulation three experimentation four analyzing the results from experiment then five evaluating and drawing conclusions yes when a problem arises you need to find the problem you need to identify the problem what is causing the problem? That's the first one. So, for example, people who live near marshy areas or choke gutters often suffer from ma malaria. So, what is the problem? People that live around bushy or ma uh, choked gutters, they are the ones that suffer from malaria. Malaria, that's the problem, right? Good. Then, we have hypothesis. Hypothesis. It's a general idea about things which always happen. And this is termed as the guess method. So you guess. Let's give ourselves an example. Example, marshy areas or choke gutters serve as the breeding grounds for mosquitoes, which cause malaria. This is the hypothesis. First one, we identified the problem as People living around bushy areas and marshy gut and, and choke gutters suffer from malaria. Then the general idea, that's the hypothesis, which suggests that 
the choke garters and the marshy areas they serve as the breeding grounds for mosquitoes okay the next one to do or the next thing to do is to experiment on it so let's move on to the third one experiment experimentation so let's give ourselves an example for experimentation for example the breeding grounds of the mosquitoes are then searched for by locating marshy areas or choke garters in the community then mosquito insecticides are then used to spray some of the located gutters or marshy areas leaving some of them then after some days the scientists will observe that people who live close to the sprayed choke gutters were healthy while those who live close to the choke gutters that were not sprayed suffer from malaria so we've experimented on it right good then let's analyze the results let's analyze the results so analyzing results the observation and results from the experiment are then analyzed to see if there is a pattern in the results by means of graphical representation and chart so the results are analyzed by comparing comparing the trends of the two setups to see then after analyzing the results we conclude that choke garters or marshy areas should be sprayed regularly with mosquito insecticides to make the community free from mosquitoes this is how we conclude I hope, <clears throat> I hope you were able to understand the steps or the scientific methods that were used in this experiment okay good now let's look at the safety rules and regulations in the laboratory since scientists work in the laboratory there should be rules and regulations govern the laboratory one do not spit into the floor why the reason is because the floor will be slippery as one can slip and cause breakages or hurt him or herself it is not advisable to chew or eat food substances in the laboratory why because the food can be contaminated with poisonous substances which is not good for our health you are not advised to walk barefooted in the laboratory why walking barefooted in a laboratory exposes one to the risks of stepping on splashed chemical or a falling pin or a pointed object or a piece of glass a piece of broken glass and we are not to pour water into acid but rather acid into water why such practice can generate heat and explosion when you pour sorry when you pour acid into water it enables the heavier acid to fall to the bottom of the container and in the process mix well to spread any heat formed to avoid boiling next rule do not wash your hand with an un unknown colorless liquid why the liquid can be harmful poisonous and irritating to the body now do not open a gas tap before looking for a match to light the benzene burner why you can also apply this at home the gas will leak into the surrounding air and lightening a match afterwards will cause the gas to inflame or cause fire outbreak you are also advised not to inhale vapor from poisonous gases or acid why one can contract respiratory diseases okay we are to close all tabs before leaving the laboratory why 
the laboratory will be flooded or filled with flammable gas if the tabs are left on overnight or a period of time now let's look at some hazardous substances and their storage and their safekeeping let's look at their symbols when you go to the laboratory you find these symbols on containers you need to know them and identify them one we have the explosive examples of substances that are explosive are tetraoxysulfate 6 acid h2so4 hydrochloric acid trioxonitrate 5 acid then ammonium hydroxide two oxidizing examples hydrogen peroxide and ammonium trioxonitrate 5 the third one corrosive we have tetraoxosulfate 6 acid hydrochloric acid triozonitrate 5 acid potassium hydroxide sodium hydroxide the fifth one harmful or irritant we have the bleaching powder butanol ethanol and boiling water the next hazardous warning we have the highly inflammable example ether petrol ethanol propanol butanol ethanol etc then we have poisonous or toxic we have the potassium cyanide the mercury 2 iodide now this brings us to the end of introduction to science what have we learned so far in today's lesson we looked at the definition of science we said is the investigation and interpretation of events which occur in our natural and physical environment we looked at the branches of science they are the pure science and the applied science we also looked at technology looked at the examples of technology information technology biotechnology food technology we also looked at the scientific methods we listed five methods scientists follow they are the identification of problem hypothesis formulation experimentation analyzing the results from experiment then evaluating and drawing conclusions we used one example as one example of the choke garters to explain the scientific methods we also looked at the rules and regulations in the laboratory then we looked at the hazardous warnings and their examples i hope this lesson has really helped you understand the importance of learning science. Thank you very much for your time and see you in the next lesson. Bye.